This is SSP TV News, brought to you by Samsung Productions and the Hazleton Standard Speaker. The superintendent of the Hazleton Area School District joins us to address rumors on social media about school safety. Hi there everyone and thank you for watching. I'm Ken Cara and here's your local information. Today's news feature is all about security in the Hazleton Area School District. Here's Lisa Sugard. I'm pleased now to be joined by Dr. Brian Uplinger, the superintendent of schools for the Hazleton Area School District. Dr. Uplinger, we want to, I guess, follow up on the news conference that you had earlier, uh, talking about the fight on December 3rd outside of the school. Um, what's the latest on that? Have people in the school, uh, students in the school been suspended or any action taken against those involved? Yes, the, the students that were involved in the altercation, uh, those that have been identified are suspended, have been suspended. Uh, additionally, we are looking to press charges against them for disorderly conduct. We're not going to tolerate any type of situation like that on school property. Um, it's ridiculous that anyone would think that they could do that, um, especially when we have a number of students that are leaving school for the day. So again, we're not tolerating any of that. Um, and we'll, we'll continue to assist the, the state police and the local police in any further investigation that they need uh, concerning that. Dr. Uplinger, there was rumors of a possible threat on the Valley Elementary Middle School. Any truth to that? Uh, we did find out that a student in the building did make um, a verbalized threat to other students in the building, indicating that uh, the student would bring a gun to school. Uh, that was acted on as, as soon as the information came to the, the administration's attention at Valley. Uh, Mr. Urechko contacted me. Uh, the student is not in school. The student will not return to school until everything has been taken care of on that end. Uh, I did send a message out to all of the Valley Elementary Middle School parents indicating that, that such an, an emergency was taking place or such a situation, not an emergency, but a situation was taking place. And... Um, informed them uh, that, that everything was under control. And, and again, the buildings are safe. Uh, the student was, was taken out as uh, quickly as we learned of, of the situation. Now you also have some new uh, safety measures in place, x-ray machines, but that's not because of the fight because you had been planning this for quite a while. Correct. Uh, the board uh, authorized the purchase of these uh, four uh, x-ray machines and uh, right now we have three on campus three of them are at the high school uh, the purchase was made through title four grant money um, each one of them uh, three of them cost thirteen thousand dollars a piece uh, the the fourth one was twelve thousand two hundred we got a little bit of a deal um, because we're, we're we were looking at buying in bulk at that time uh, so the the uh, the vendor said we'll you know we'll give you a little bit of a discount on the on the fourth one um, eventually, we're hoping that they're going to be in all of our schools. Uh, again, it's just an, an additional safety measure that could be put into place to help the situation, to help ease minds you know, across the district of parents and students coming to school. And just, just know, again, on top of everything else, the, our schools are safe. Our schools are the safest area for anyone to be during the school day. And uh, we, we pride ourselves on that. We, we do a fantastic job. Our security officers are, are phenomenal. Um, and, and they really keep a, a handle on, on the situations that are occurring. Now, using those x-ray machines, it's a little slower for the students to get in because obviously you're looking at their belongings to make sure that everything is safe, correct? So it does slow down the entrance process. It does. Uh, and our, our um, chief of police did implement a different process uh, today, and it did seem to move along things a little bit more smoothly, a little bit more quickly uh, from what we had uh, earlier this week. And, um, you know, we, again, it's just one more measure to put that we have to, to put into place to allow our students to, to feel more safe as they come to our schools. And for those who may not know, you do have a complete security force for the Hazleton Area School District. So tell us what that entails. Sure, we do. Uh, we have our own school police officers. We have eight of those uh, individuals that are across the district. They're shared between some buildings. Um, we also have around 38 to 40 security officers that are located, again, in all of our buildings. We have at least one in every school building. Sometimes we have two, depending on the size of the building. 
Uh, we also have obviously a police chief um, that oversees that department as well. So uh, we are we are very blessed to have um, a system in place such as this to help us um, and to help keep those those buildings that we have safe. Now I know social media played a role in all of this because things the rumor mill kind of really went into overdrive with this. What's your reaction to that? Yeah, it it really angers me to to think that individuals would post um, threatening information that is completely false. Uh, there were no direct threats directed at the district. Um, the victim that was involved in the in the fight was not on life support. So anyone that felt the need to drudge up or to um, send out false information is just as much as much a fault at causing the panic and causing the current concerns that parents have. So again, it really angers me that anyone would think that anything's posted on social media, unless it comes from me, is true. So that, you know, that situation, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat, whatever, um, information that is posted on those, unless it comes from me, is false. And if anyone sees anything suspect outside any school, should they call the district and let them know what they see? Absolutely. Uh, please call the, the building that it's closest to. Please call my office. Please shoot me an email. Um, whatever means of, of uh, communication you have available, please let us know so we can continue to keep these buildings safe, and continue to keep the students and staff safe in each and every one of them. Today's news feature is brought to you by Frankie's Pizzeria and Restaurant in downtown Hazleton. For more information on their specials, hours, and where you can find their delicious tavern pizza, you can call 570-454-6000 or you can visit their Facebook page. Time now for weather on SSPTV News. Here's our forecast from the National Weather Service on Friday, partly sunny with a high near 42 degrees. On Friday night, a 60% chance of showers, mainly after 1 a.m., mostly cloudy with a low around 36 degrees. We have a hazardous weather outlook on Saturday with wind gusts from 35 to 45 miles per hour possible Saturday morning through Saturday night. On Saturday, an 80% chance of showers and a possible thunderstorm high near 60 degrees. Then on Saturday night, a 30% chance of rain showers mixing with snow after midnight, then gradually ending, mostly cloudy with a low around 30 degrees. Sunday, sunny with a high near 38 degrees. Sunday night, mostly clear with a low around 29 degrees. Monday, sunny with a high near 45 degrees. And Monday night, mostly clear with a low around 28 degrees. Still to come in our sports feature, members of the Hazleton Area High School boys water polo team talk about making the state tournament for the first time, and they relive an exciting game that led to them making history. Up next, there's a big boxing event coming to Hazleton this weekend, and it will help out a group called SAFE, supporting autism and families everywhere. The Freeland American Post 473 is asking the community to donate new unwrapped toys for the annual Toys for Tot drives. Donations can be accepted at the Post, which is located at 523 Center Street in Freeland, now through December 15th. SBTV News lets out sincere condolences to the family and friends of these recently departed. Lee Paul Bragalode, age 69, of Tresco, the Crofton News Funeral Home, will announce their arrangements. And Nicholas Godoli, age 75, of Pardeesville, Friends may call on Friday from 6 to 8 p.m. at the Fiero Funeral Home. Tonight's obituaries are being brought to you in part by Harmon Funeral Homes and Crematory, with two locations in Rockland and in Drums, 570-384-3312 or 570-788-0977. And go to harmonfuneral.com.